Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm doing a Nebula Reactions to the short stories. If you are new to this channel, I like to look at the works that have been nominated for the Nebula Awards, and these awards are decided on members of the Science Fiction Writers Association. So they typically are other writers. So I like to read them and then tell you my thoughts. And I generally start from my least favorite and then go to my favorite. Starting with Bad Doors by John Wiswell. I think this is where we have a concept of someone who actually uses their brain. It means you're not gonna have much of a story. So in this, we are following Cosmo who is living with his cousin, Jesse. Owns his own home, is doing pretty well. The pandemic is here, and one day a mysterious door shows up in his house, and instead of being intrigued and wondering why it's there, he runs. He sells the house, gets everything out, moves to a different house, and in that new house, he finds the door reappears. And so this is in his story of just the door reappears, and he moves into another house, down to like a hotel room, to a RV, all during the beginning of the 2020 pandemic. That's the gist of the story. And so for me, again, it goes back to, okay, we have somebody who's very logical who said, oh, that door? Nope, don't want anything to do with it. I'm out. And you really don't have a story then. That's why it's my least favorite. Then we have Window Boy by Thomas Ha. And this has a very interesting setup where it's a, an apocalyptic world, mutants and people have been changed, and now families live very, very separate and very rarely get together to interact. And I don't even think the main character has a name. Maybe he does. Oh, Jakey. I think it's Jakey. Jakey is a child and his parents are talking about sending him to a boarding school. And I guess in this instance, he'll actually get to interact with other humans. But right now he is just stuck at home with his mom and dad. His dad works remotely. His mom is very much classic signs of depression. And they have rules of how, you know, they keep themselves safe. And one of them is to not turn on the window light so that those from outside can then see you. And Jakey breaks that. And he becomes friends with a young boy outside. Sort of friends anyway, they talk and he tries to give him a sandwich. And even though Jakey's been warned that the boy will eventually ask him for a favor, he still is doing all of this. And then we get to the point where the boy does ask for a favor. I think for me, the most poignant message was on that window, there are certain filters. So Jakey can see the boy. And when he turns off the filters later on, he can then see other people who are wearing camouflage makeup to hide from the cameras. And then, so the message I was kind of getting is we choose the filters that we have in our life. You know, we the term rose-tinted glasses, it's very real. We choose how we see the world and what parts of it we want to see and want to acknowledge. So that's what I got from this story. Next is The Sound of Children Screaming by Rachel K. Jones. This is a very unique take of a school shooting. The main character is a teacher, but we don't start off following her. We start off following the gun. Not the shooter, but the actual instrument. And Jones is basically personifying the gun. While this gun enters the school, the teacher takes her class and as many as she can, she puts in a safe closet in her room and it ends up, it's a portal to another world. And so the teacher and eight students gets sent to another world. Not all of the students go, it's just eight. And then the teacher watches as these big rodent-like creatures convince the children that they have special powers and should become the rulers and fight their wars. 
and the teacher knows that this is not the best thing for the kids, but going back, is that really the best situation for them either? And it's all about the abuse of power and how societies are just going to use up their children. Or they see them as a commodity and not as individual people. At least that's what I got out of it. Then I have Once Upon a Time at the Oakmont by P.A. Cornell. And this is about a fantastical apartment building in New York where the residents are all from different time periods. And you might not be able to see all the residents in the building or interact with all of them. And there's rules for how you interact with one another. So for example, you can visit residents from an earlier time, but the earlier time residents can't visit the future. And there's a woman named Sarah who meets this guy from the 1930s and falls in love with him. And then has to go through the horror as he gets closer and closer to, I guess it's the early 1940s, not the 1930s, because he's coming up to World War II. And as he's talking about things, she knows what's going on, but she can't tell him. And then she's so afraid because what's he going to do with about World War II? And he ends up enlisting and she can't find any record of him. One of the things of breaking the rules is trying to find older residents in the future. Yeah, so it's her trying to deal with, I don't know whether the man I love lives or dies, and he's from a different decade anyway. And it does wrap up very nicely in a very interesting way. Then I have Tante Merrill and the Farmhand 4200. And this one I think is very sweet. You know, she's older, she's like grandma age, and she's having you know, physical issues with getting down to garden and to taking care of her goats. And so one of her daughters sends her a farmhand 4200 to help her. And Tante Merrill ends up becoming friends with the farmhand 4200 and their interactions changes the robotic AI, how it approaches life and how it problem solves and how it sees itself as having worth. And not only that individual robot, but because it's linked to other robot, other farmhand 4200s, it also changes them. The one thing I was confused about is because this is written in vernacular or dialect. Some of the things that were mentioned at the very beginning had me thinking this was placed in the south of the United States. And it wasn't until I got to the very end that I found out, no, it's in Trinidad, which makes the dialect make more sense. Whereas before I was like, well, this isn't a Southern accent. Like, I don't understand. I don't think the author meant to be confusing, but when he mentioned, you know, Texas and Florida, that's why I'm thinking it's the South. And yes, miss, and mentioned like coastal islands. And so I'm still thinking it's related to the States and not Trinidad. So for a while I was really like having a hard time, like hearing this dialect as a Southern accent. And then I get to the end and they're like, in Trinidad. And I'm like, oh, if I had known that this whole time, this would have been much easier to read. And I probably would have enjoyed it more. So if you haven't read it, just know when you go to read the dialect, it's Trinidad. And that should help you a lot better. But otherwise, a very heartwarming story. And I forgot to say that this one is by R.S.A. Garcia. And then my favorite is Better Living Through Algorithms by Naomi Kritzer. This follows, I forget the main friend's name, but there's two of them, like, or two others, June and Margot, and they talk about how June is always the one out front, getting into different the technology, trying new things, and finds this app that promotes healthier and better living, and it's working, and so the main character decides to give it a try after her boss kind of talks about it's a productivity tool and try it and she you know puts it on her phone and starts kind of working with it and then realizes that it is not what her boss thought at all and this is a app that is strictly about making the user happy so like the main character gets encouraged to start painting again 
or to start drawing and, and then painting, getting embracing art, how she wanted to do as a child, but then didn't. Also interacting more with people and less with a screen. I thought it was a very novel concept of how to use technology in a very good way. And then it does show how things get broken open. Who, who created this app is secret for most of it. And then the story gets broken open. And of course, corporate greed infects the app and it doesn't work as well. But the main character has takes some lessons that she learned while using the app and applies it to her life further on. So overall, I do think that this is a heartwarming story of a near future possibility. And yeah, I would use this app, at least in the first stages, not later once they get all the advertisements on it. So that was my favorite, was Better Living Through Algorithms. Have you read any of these short stories? If so, I would love to know your opinions. If not, I am linking them down below. Go read them. They are a lot of fun and they don't take a lot of time. Thank you and have a great day.